So we can check out the documentation on backends real quick. Each tier form configuration can specify a backend which defines where and how operations are performed and where state is stored. So backends aren't just about state, but you can also have some backends run your Terraform plans and applies for you. So we can see we have enhanced backends. There's local and remote. And enhanced backends mean um, a place where your state is stored and where it runs uh, your Terraform plans and applies. So local, which is what we've been doing the whole time, and remote, which is basically something like Terraform Cloud, and there's a few others as well. But Terraform Cloud is the one that's provided by Terraform itself, by HashiCorp. And then there's standard backends. Standard backends only store your state. And some of them also give you the ability to perform some locking. So concurrent Terraform applies are not allowed. We're using S3. And of course, there's others like Postgres, um, etcd, console, a bunch of good stuff here. So S3. And S3 is standard with locking via DynamoDB. So we can actually use DynamoDB to give concurrency checks to the Terraform backend, the S3 backend, which will prevent concurrent Terraform applies. So we have this configuration of all the various options and IAM permissions you might need for your S3 bucket and for your DynamoDB table. In our case, my profile, my AWS credentials that I'm using has access to everything in my AWS account. So I don't have to set individual permissions. If we go on down to DynamoDB state locking, we'll see the following configuration options. DynamoDB endpoint, which is optional and probably one you won't use. It's for a custom endpoint to AWS DynamoDB. And DynamoDB table, which is the one we will probably use, which is the name of the DynamoDB table that we can create for locking. So let's actually go ahead and see how that works. Over here, I'm gonna go to DynamoDB. We can create a table. I'm going to call it Cloudcast Terraform course and our primary key. So if we go back to the docs here, we'll see the primary key must be named lock ID with a type of string. So lock ID type of string. I'll use our default settings. I'm not going to add any tags for now. We'll just create this and we can see that this is our table name. So back here, we're going to do a Dynamo DB table in our configuration here for backend Dynamo DB table. Outcast Terraform course. Okay, so this is all set and created. I think that's all we need here. Let's go back here. We'll do Terraform Init once again. Terraform has detected configuration for backend has changed. It will now check the existing state. So reusing the previous version, successfully configured it, and we can now do stuff. So back here, if we make a change, we're just going to add a tag to a resource here. And the tag we add doesn't matter. I just want to make a change here. Over here, we'll do Terraform apply to apply that change. Staging for my environment. Yes, you see it has a tag and I have a foo tag there already for me testing this out. And that happens for releasing state lock. This may take a few moments. Notice that there's a state lock now. Perfect. If we head back to Safari, we'll go to items here and we're going to see there is a lock ID, a lock here. We have some ND5 hash for the digest of this lock, but we can see that there is in fact a lock being added to the DynamoDB table here to ensure that we can uh, prevent concurrent runs of Terraform apply in team settings. Perfect. 